Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum for another gamble of ghoulish goings on. Come in, come in. We're, we're celebrating an anniversary here tonight. Our pet vampires, Oscar and Bertha, have been dead just a hundred years. They're such a devoted couple. With them, it was love at first sight. <laughs> In all their years of unholy wedlock, they've argued only once over the training of their backward son, Abner. Oscar blames the little vampire shyness on Bertha. She kept insisting that Abner was much too young to be taught the tax of death. <laughs> Say, you should see the new home that Oscar just dug for his family. Complete with hot and cold running victims. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Fearful Voyage, was written by Ed Adamson and Robert Sloan, and stars Arnold Moss in the role of Steve, with Elspeth Eric as Rita. All right, folks. Set for another saga in the sanguinary. Mm. Well, make yourself comfortable. Sit right next to me. Here, in this coffin. And don't worry about the price of the seat. There's no cover charge. <laughs> now let's get to the story as it's told to us by Steve Chapman. Flashes of lightning rip through the black sky in angry silver streaks. A snarling wind whips the sea into a jagged, tossing mountain range of gray water. The fishing boat fonders on the reef, its wooden sides crying out against the punishment of the lashing waves. And there on the deck of the dying ship, the lone fisherman faces the relentless fury of the elements. Doesn't have to be this way. She can save me, but she won't. She just stands on that rock and looks down at me and laughs. This is just the way she wants it. She just stands up there and laughs at me because she wants me to be as dead as she is. Oh, if I could only go back. It was only two days ago. Just two days ago. If I could only go back to where I was two days ago. The tuna were running, and we were getting the boat ready to go out for the catch. I had two men of my crew, both good fishermen. Carlos was weaned on tackle, and he could smell out a school of fish a hundred miles away. My other hand, Johnny Martin, could handle a line with the best. The engine's in good shape, Steve. All right, Johnny. Carlos, how about the supplies? All stored below, Steve. This time I bring extra bottle of wine. Import stuff. Yeah, it's based me a girlfriend's cellar. No, no, <laughs> Johnny. This is real import stuff. Come from Lisbon. Cost me eight bucks this much wine. Yeah. I'll show you later. Okay, Carlos. Okay. Hey, look, look, look. Why don't you two go over to the cove for a drink? We won't be getting underway for an hour. Ah, oh, but Steve, we are ready now. Uh, Rita's coming down. Oh, we're going up the coast to Goldwater before we head out to the banks. See, we'll lose six or seven hours. Oh, we'll make it up, Johnny. I'm dropping Rita off at Goldwater. She's going to stay with her sister while we're out. No, oh, Steve, you not do that. What are you talking about? A woman on board. It is bad luck. Yeah, but Rita's my wife. Make no difference. It's bad thing, Steve, to bring a woman on fishing boat. This I know. It bring much bad luck. Listen to him, will you, Johnny? That's yeah, an old fishing superstition. Please, Steve, you hear what I say. Please. It's true. Sure, sure, sure. Like breaking a mirror. Seven years Oh, you make fun, but it's true, I say. Come on, Carlos. Forget it. Let's get that drink now, huh? No drink, Johnny, yet. Steve. Yeah? You bring wife on boat? Sure, I will. You don't think I fall for that hokum, do you? You bring wife? Then Carlos does not go. Hey, now, wait a minute. Carlos does not go. It will be a bad trip. He does not go if you bring woman on this boat. Carlos wasn't kidding. And Carlos was too good a hand to lose. I, I quieted him down, and he and Johnny went over to the cove. I was down in the cabin when Rita came on towards. Hello, Steve. She stood in the doorway holding a suitcase. Every time I looked at Rita, 
It was like I was seeing her for the first time. She was always new and more beautiful than ever. Young, alive. That's why I tried so hard to hold on to her. What are you looking at? You. Just you, Rita. Something wrong with me? Wrong? Uh, you're about perfect. Well, I'm just going to take my bag. Rita. Yeah? You can't come on the boat to Goldwater. Why not? Carlos. Carlos, what's he got to do with it? Well, he won't sail with me if you come aboard. He says it's bad luck to have a woman aboard. Now, I know it sounds okay. foolish. Okay, but... that's the way it is. Well, Rita, it isn't that I don't want you. All right, all right, it's that's okay. Rita. What? You go to your sister in Goldwater like you promised? Sure. You promise? Oh, when you... Stop it, will you? Let me alone with that promising business. Well, Rita, Tony, because I love you so yeah. much. I, I just want to get you out of this town while I'm away. I, I I know you're young. I know it's no fun waiting weeks while I'm away. I don't blame you for going to those dances. You don't blame me. That's nice of you, real nice. What do you expect me to do, sit home and knit? Well, it's just that I don't want you to meet someone else who might be Look, Eve, about time I told you something. I did meet someone. I know, Rita. Huh? That's why I asked you to go to your sister's. Don't do any good. I wasn't going to stay in Goldwater anyway. I won't be around when you get back, Steve. Oh, Rita, now please. Go. Just... Now, don't let no, it go. No, Rita, you got to wait for Stop, me. You're messing me all out. Now, let no, go. No, 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 not until you get promise me. Get your hands off of me. I said I can't stand it when you touch me. Oh, get Rita. Get your dirty hands off of me. Look at them. Look at the way they smell of fish. Pouring me over. Grabbing makes my stomach turn. All right. I promise you I'll give up fishing. This will be my last trip. I, I promise. Only, only you gotta wait. Wait! I wouldn't wait another two minutes. I always hated you. From the first time you put those hands of yours on me, I only married you because I needed somebody to take care of me. Oh, no, don't well, you What do you think that? I married you for? Because you're young and handsome. Stop, young you. and handsome. Oh, that's a laugh. Did you ever take a look at yourself in a mirror? A good look? Stop, oh, stop, oh, stop. I had her make her stop talking that way. So I hit her. She staggered back across the cavern up against the beam. Then she slumped to the floor. I stood over her. A ribbon of blood flowed out of her blonde hair, moved toward my feet. I touched her and I spoke to her. But she was motionless and silent and dead. Rita was dead. And I killed her. But I didn't mean to. I loved her, but... What could I tell them? They wouldn't believe me. I knelt there looking down at her. And then I heard the whistling. Carlos and Johnny were coming back. Lifted Rita in my arms. And carried her across the cabin to the chest. I put her in there. I slammed close the lid of the chest just as Carlos and Johnny come down the stairs in the cabin. Well, Steve, ready to get here? Uh, yeah, 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 Johnny. She does not come with us, Steve? No, Carlos. It's better that way. Maybe it is. It's safe. Huh? That's two suitcase over there. That's Rita's, isn't it? Uh, she forgot it, maybe. I bring it to her right now. Oh, no, no, no. What you got? Wait, to... wait, we're shoving off right now. What the bag of Rita? Well, she, uh, well, she brought some stuff down for me, some things I forgot. Get the motor started, Johnny. Okay, Skipper. Well, Carlos, what are you standing there for? You heard me, we're shoving off. I hear you, Steve. I hear you. <laughs> I didn't leave my cabin. I didn't sleep. I just sat there for hours, my eyes fixed on her chest. I wanted to open it and look at her again, but I, I couldn't. I just sat there. We were only out ten hours when things began to happen. The radio shot, Steve. Well, fix it, Johnny. I can't. The power supplies burn out. It's a funny thing about that. I just put a new condenser in day before yesterday, a brand new one. It's funny. For no reason, it should burn out. I was never a superstitious man, but peculiar things like that. And that was only the first. What do you want, Carlos? Let me in, please. 
Steve. This camp. Can I say I should show it to you? Why? Well, look at it. We are headed north. But the needle points this way. Oh, no. Now, you see? Give me that compass. Sure. Steve, what are you doing? This will fix it good. Steve! You break the Why? Get out of here. What you can't... Go on, as I tell you. Get out. Go on, get out. I never was a superstitious man, but peculiar things like that. Carlos was right. But there was something Carlos didn't know. A woman can curse a ship even after she's dead. Rita's body was in that chest. And that's... Just where that compass needle pointed. Right straight to Rita. Superstition become a fact. A real living thing. I had to get Rita's body off that boat... Before something really bad struck us. I put the body into my sea bag and carried it up on deck. It was a bright moonlit night, clear, except for one dark cloud that hung just above our mast. Hello, Steve. Carlos. Oh, you come on deck, Steve. I'm glad. You feel better, eh? Thought you were in your bunk. No, I do not see it, Steve. That sea bag. What about it? What you do with it? Well, why? Is it any of your business? Why, you only ask, Steve. Well, it's, uh, got some of my old clothes in it. Yeah, yeah, some old clothes. I was going to dump them overboard. Will you let me see what you have in the bag, Steve? Well, eh? I told you, I only got... But some... you all the time give me old clothes. Some very good. This coat I wear. I take before you throw it away, you remember? There's nothing in here you can use. Well, how do you know? You don't let me see. I told you there's nothing in here for you. Nothing that's any good. Now, will you get Steve. out of here? Huh? Look. What's the matter? Look on the deck. It comes from that bag. Blood. Steve. You're dripping from the back, you hold. I made some kind of an excuse. I told Carlos I cut my shoulder, and then I threw the bloody shirt into the sea bag. After Carlos went up to the deck house where Johnny was at the wheel, I threw the bag over the side. <laughs> below to my cabin. I almost felt good again. All my worries, all my fears went over the side with that bag. Now the curse was lifted. Now everything would be all right. I thought, but it didn't turn out that way. I heard the ship's motor die out. The boat came to a stop. I hurried across the cabin, opened the door, went upstairs to the deck. Steve! The uh, motor stopped. Yeah. Well, what happened? I cut it off. You cut it? Well, why? There's someone in the water. What? That's the port side. Carlos is going out in the lifeboat to get her. Her? Yes, Steve. It's a woman. Well, get Carlos. Call him back. But Steve... what I tell you. Get him back. And you start that motor. Steve, you can't do a thing like that. I said we're getting out of here. That isn't right. You can't let that woman down. We can't let her die. But she is dead. She's dead, John. No, 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 Steve. She isn't. Come on over to the side. You can see her swimming out there in the water. Ah, no, it's only the moonlight. It's just the way things look in a moonlight place. Tricks on your eyes, Johnny. Steve, I saw her. She's alive. It was Rita. I knew it was Rita out there. I knew she was dead. Johnny left me and crossed to the port side of the boat. I looked up. The same black cloud was over the mast, and then I... I heard it. I wanted to believe it was a wind, just the wind, but it wasn't. I knew it was Rita. It was her voice. I clapped my hands to my ears to shut out the terrible sound, but it struck through my fingers like a knife and jammed into my brain. And then... Blacked out. Oh. Here. Here, Steve. You drink this one. Carlos. You fall downstairs. You get sick, eh, Steve? Yeah, 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 Carlos. I get sick, I guess. We have a woman. Huh? She's here. Woman? Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I remember. Carlos, 
You brought her on board? Yeah. You know what that means, Carlo. She told me herself it's bad luck. I know, but this we gotta tell. We gotta let the woman drown in the sea. Yeah, but she couldn't drown. She was dead already. I tell you, she was dead. I know I you. Do I look dead to you? Carlos. Well, do I? I go to deck house with you. No, 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 Carlos, don't leave me here with her. You talk to her. No, 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 Carlos, come back. You're afraid of something, Steve. Is it me? You're dead. Now, why do you keep saying? Well, because you are. I know you're dead. I would have been, but Carlos and Johnny saved me. Well, you don't look the same, but that's a trick to fool them. I know who you are. No, you yes, don't. Yes, 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 I do. And I know why you come back, Rita. My name isn't Rita. It's Edith. Edith Lawson. I told the whole story to Johnny and Carlos. My plane crashed into the ocean. That's simple. They believed it. Because they don't know. You can trick them. Steve, you're sick. I know why you come back from the dead. You want to see me destroyed. You can't fool me because I know who you really are. You seem so sure of that. Sure. It's that dress you're wearing. I remember it, Rita. I gave you that dress for your birthday. I had to get her off the boat again. Some way. Johnny, that fool Johnny, told her to rest in his bunk. If I could only make him understand somehow. I went up on deck. The superstition was being fulfilled right in front of my eyes. The black cloud above the mass spread itself out into a giant blanket, snuffing out the light of the moon and the stars. Cold wind came moaning out of nowhere. I had to do something before it was too late. I went forward to the deck house where Carlos was at the wheel. Carlos, yeah, he would understand. Not understand, Steve. What do you try to say? That woman, Carlos, she's cursing this boat. Look how it's blowing up. Yeah, yes, yeah, Steve. Big storm coming. Well, she's doing it. It's because she's on this boat. We'll all be killed. Nothing we can do, Steve. Yes, there is. We can get rid of her. Steve! Don't you see? We gotta. If we're gonna come out of this storm alive, we gotta get rid of her. Oh, not a thing like that, Steve. Carlos, listen to me. I'm gonna tell you something. That woman. That woman, she's not who you think she is. She's my wife, Rita. No, Steve. Yes, she is. Rita, come on board before we left port. I lied to you. She didn't go back on shore. I killed her. And it's a trick. The dead who return can play tricks. But there's one sure thing I know her by. That dress she's wearing. I gave it to her as a birthday present. Steve, I gave the woman that dress. What? She was wet. I look in your closet and cabin for something for her to wear. I find the dress in Rita's suitcase. What? In the suitcase, you say Rita bring your things, Steve. Well, then... I knew when then... I see the blood fall on deck from that sea bag. But you never said anything. She was a bad woman, Steve. No good. But she's come back, Carlos. No, Steve. Rita's dead. She's come back. I tell you, she's, she's down below in Johnny's bunk. She's bringing this storm on. She's going to have us all killed. I know what we'll do, Carlos. No, Steve. You want to die? This bad thing to kill. I have it all planned. You throw a blanket over her so Johnny won't hear a scream. Steve, please, I cannot do this. I have a piece of lead pipe in the cabin. I'll take care of the rest with that. No, Steve. I will not help you. No matter what storm brings, I will not help you kill. I had to do it myself. The passageway to Johnny's bunk was dark. As I got closer, I could hear her breathing. Then I threw the blanket over her. And as I held the blanket down, she started a kick and struggle. Then I raised the pipe and... I picked up the lifeless body in the blanket and carried it up to the deck and over to the rail. Stood on the deck and watched the storm grow and grow. A wind, a wind whipped the heavy rain before it. The swelling waves lashed and kicked at the sides of the boat. I almost welcomed the storm because I knew we'd ride through it. She was gone, this time forever. You enjoying the storm? I wheeled around. She was standing at the top of the stairs, the light from the cabin below me. Devil's shadows on her face. My 
mind if I stand here with you? Oh, no, don't you come near me. You're still afraid Stay of away. me. Stay away. You mustn't be afraid of me, Steve. Well, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to be dead like you. Why do you think I'm dead? Well, I just killed you again. Again? Well, how can you come back again? I had it all planned perfectly to blunt the pipe. I knew you'd be in Johnny's bunk. I wasn't in Johnny's bunk. Yes, you were. I threw a blanket over you and... You killed Johnny. What? I told Johnny wanted me to come up to the deck house, and then Johnny went back to his bunk. It, it wasn't you, Johnny. I killed Johnny. Steve, we've got trouble. Follow us, Johnny. I will trouble, Steve. The wheel, it will not move. It stays one way. I can do nothing with it. The castle reef is ahead. We are coming to it soon. We will go up in the reef. You must get Johnny quick. He can fix the wheel. Johnny is the one who can save us. Johnny was the one who could save us, and Johnny was dead. I killed him. I went to the deck house. Carlos played the light beam on the darkness ahead. Well, I tried the wheel. It, it wouldn't budge. It was as if an invisible hand was holding a boat on a fixed course. See it? Up ahead. There it is. We've got to get out of here. We're going in the rack. Hurry. Something held me in the deck house. It was what I saw at the top of one of the rocks. Rita. It was Rita. She was standing there waving to me. Steve, hurry! It will be too late! They are looking up at Rita as the rocks come closer and closer. Steve, you hurt bad. Yeah, yeah, pretty bad, Carlos. Got to get me out of here. Quite right, Steve. I cannot move the beam. God, the boat's going under. You can't let me die like this. I'm sorry, Steve. I can't do nothing. The woman, Edith Lawson, I must save her. She's hurt, too. I must get her in the lifeboat. Carlos, Carlos, don't leave me. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye. Carlos, please come back. Come back and help me. Something for all you folks with troublesome spouses. Um, Watered Down theme song composed by the three ancient mariners. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, let's see. How's it going? Oh, yeah. Pack up your wives in your old sea bag and drown, drown, drown. <laughs> Night, pleasant dreams. Sanctum was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. It has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. 